Welcome back to our Certified Entry Level Python Programmer course, and we are ready to talk about Python literals. And you might be thinking, Anthony, what in the world is a Python literal? I've never heard of such a thing. And I want you to just use this simple explanation. It's the opposite of a variable. Yeah, we've all heard of variables, and a variable can contain just that, some varied quantity or value. Literals are the exact opposite. So what is a great example of a literal inside of Python? Well, it's an integer. So if we tell Python that something has a value of 1024, Python realizes this is 1024 and stores that value as an integer. Another example of an integer would be a negative integer. Yeah, so Python understands negative 200. As a matter of fact, in your Python code, you could do a positive sign in front of your positive integers if you wanted to. Of course, most of us do not bother with that. Now, what if you had a number like 1,111,111? Notice this is tricky when you're typing it in because, and pay attention to this fact, folks, there's no way we can use commas in our integers inside of Python. Yeah, this is not going to be permitted. So around 3.6 of Python, they invented a underscore approach that we can use to improve readability. So if you want to enter a very large number, like 1,111,111, and you want a substitute for commas, you can use underscores now. And again, that is a 3.6 version of Python invention. So that's one of the latest inventions we're gonna be looking at together in this course. Pretty nifty that you can do that if you are so interested. So integers, yeah, they're wonderful. We're accustomed to them. They work great. And guess what another literal is in Python? Well, sure, it's a floating point number. So when we have a decimal portion, we are going to represent that with the period and 12 and a half or 12.5 would be a great example of a floating point number. What's another example? Well. 4.0, although realize that is different from the integer four. So if you meant the integer four, go ahead and do it that way. It will be stored as an integer instead of a floating point. How about negative floating point numbers? Yeah, no problem. So we could have negative 120.5 as an example. What's another type of literal inside of Python? Well, it's the Boolean values of true and false. That's right. So things can evaluate to true or false. We can set things to true or false, and this is another literal. Now, what's interesting about Booleans is behind the scenes, they have integer values specifically true is one and false is zero. There's actually a fun way we can prove this in Python. Let's do it together now. I'm gonna fire up my idle environment and I'm going to say print false is greater than true. So I am saying here, print the result of the evaluation, false is greater than true. What am I saying here? I'm saying zero is greater than one. And of course, Python is going to correct us and say, uh, sorry, that evaluates to false. Yeah, false is not greater than true. Zero is not greater than one. So pretty neat test to see that Python is actually looking at true and false as zero and one values. Pretty nifty. Well, what other types of literals do we have? Well, there's our wonderful string types. 
So here is an example of a string, and we know that Python is going to see this as a string because of those quotes around it. How about this example? Yeah, we put quotes around two, and it is the string of two. Yeah, you could have fun with this in Python as well. I can say print and say two, and that is printing the string of two, but then when I say print two, this is printing the integer of two. Yeah, they look identical, but of course, the Python programming interpreter is treating these very differently. What's another example of a string? Well, how about this one? We want to print out, I love Monty Python. Python, by the way, is taking its name from none other than Monty Python. The creator of Python was a huge fan of the Brit British comedy troupe Monty Python. So, I love Monty Python. Notice what we did to make this possible. I used single quotes around the string so that I could use the double quotes within the string. Now, if you didn't want to do that for whatever reason, let's say you wanted to stick with the double quotes, you could do, I love, and then backslash double quote Monty Python backslash double quote. So what we're doing there is we're using what's called an escape character. And the escape character says, treat what follows differently than normal. And in this case, it is to treat it just as a part of the string. So notice they thought of everything in Python for us, right? They knew we might want to have quotes in a string, so we're gonna have multiple ways in which we can accomplish that inside of Python. Finally, there's the literal of none. That is right, Python has a reserved keyword of none that it will apply when there is no value. Please note, this doesn't equal zero. No, 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 this just means none. There is no value. And one of the things that we can do, of course, is we could always test for this. We could say, you know, is a variable consisting of none? Meaning, does the variable have no value whatsoever? Now, there are some other literals like collections, we have lists and we have uh, definitions and, and kinds of collections that we can have in Python, but we'll go ahead and deal with those where appropriate, like dictionaries, we'll deal with those where appropriate inside of the course. So, literals in Python, no problem at all for us, and we need to follow this up in the very next video with the many ways that we can express literals inside of Python. This includes things like hexadecimal or binary notation or even scientific notation. We'll show you that next and we can't wait to see you there.